Good day, this is Brad Caleb, PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. You wonder what does that mean? I continue to work on the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. Have you ever noticed a building that was not built on a proper foundation and it starts to sway and sway to the left or to the right or it shows cracks? That's exactly what we're dealing with. And as a person specialized in this area. I was brought up a Christian. I was raised a Christian. Actually, I was born a Christian because I got a slap on my bum and I was a Roman Catholic. When my mom passed away, six years old, I was six years old, the oldest of five. My mom passed away and we went to an orphanage for seven years. After we came back, my dad remarried and he asked us to come home. I didn't fit in the family pattern anymore and so shortly thereafter I was on my own on the street and continue going on. Being effective in a Bible school, a seminary, as well as a practical Bible school, 12 years in the ministry, I learned a few things. But you know, the biggest lesson I learned when I worked in, in the ministry for 12 years, it was a prison ministry. But when I became a prisoner and sentenced for six years times three in Canada in a criminal court because I dare say no to a Freemason because a transaction that I was working on, they wanted half of it. It happens to be my best friend and he swore I would regret the moment I turned him down. And since then, I came to understand, having been in court for 18 years in total, six years with lawyers and 12 years without lawyers. That meant that 12 years long, we had to defend ourselves. In a six months trial eventually, before judge and jury, I got sentenced six years and my wife three years. The beauty of it was that the process was terrible. We lost everything. And I'm talking millions of dollars. Also billions of collateral. But the nicest part of it all was my eyes were opened because everything I believed in, everything that I was taught I had applied and then to find out on the intense pressure that I had to learn the law, the law, the way God intended the law to be. And that was worse than ever because I believe that what we did was right. We hired the right people. We hired the people that had all the, the paperwork and everything. 
We had even people with White House clearance working for us. So everything was done by the book. Yet when the judge told me that even with the right intent, you can still be wrong, my eyes opened. And I started to look and question everything I did. Why did I believe what I believed? How come that my pastors told me certain things? The people that I looked up to, those that were impressive because they were men of God. And to admit, I discovered that many of them lied to me. Not so much because they wanted to lie because out of ignorance. But like I learned, I was held responsible because I was the owner. And as owner, if somebody steals in your company, you are held liable. Even if a transaction doesn't work the way you want to, and you were not able to fix the problem, I was held liable. And therefore I took the responsibility. And with that responsibility, something else happened. I discovered more than I wanted to. I discovered that what I believed in was also based on a lie. Although my intent was to serve the Lord with all my life and all my heart, the intent was there, but the reality, because I had learned now, working as a self-defense, technically I was a lawyer for ourselves, my wife and I. But the reality was, we learned the law from a different perspective. Only evidence counts and precedence and appeal. Although I lost the case, I won on appeal, which is great, but the misery I pulled my family through because of my ignorance, that is why we decided, I decided to write it all down. And as I was writing down the prodigal son, the deception protocol, we are dealing with a protocol that we think is the norm to find out it's a deception. And now that is what we're dealing with. It's Trump, the ticket to the rapture. You see, there are so many Trumps and you will hear in Revelations, there's a Trump for this, a Trump for that, and a Trump for this. But right now we have a Trump sitting in the White House. And is he the ticket to the rapture? As so many people seem to think. And that is what we're dealing with today. Let's find out what the situation is today. Is Trump the ticket to the rapture? Or is Trump the greatest conspiracy besides Emperor Constantine I? Both of them were in power. Both of them think they're better than anybody else. The only difference is I'm talking about President Trump, not the Trumps in the rapture. And the other one was Emperor Constantine I. And he was in power around 235 AD. He was also used as a person of interest because Christianity was basically insurrected or surrected through his demands, his degrees. A Christian oxymoron, restorative justice, PMS versus PMS 48. So many of us say, what is that PMS? PMS that I talk about is in court when you have one versus the other. It is God's deal with what Satan is offering. When God created Adam and Eve, he used a physical body. He gave us a mental capacity and he gave us a spiritual aspect. The spirit was supposed to live forever. And therefore Satan came with his contraband and he came up with politics, P, M for money, and the S for spirituality or religion. And we notice that constantly PMS versus PMS, where God instituted something that was godly. He created heaven and earth. He created Adam and Eve. He opened the door 
for Adam and Eve to be with him forever. And yet Satan came in and destroyed it or stole it or did something to make sure that the people could no longer be in the presence of God. And again, when God found a man by the name of Abraham, and out of that group came a man called Moses. Moses led the people out of Egypt. And God said to Moses, okay, I have a covenant for the children of light. See, that is a secret that most people forget, that the children of light were the ones that God was looking for. And he had a covenant. And when Moses was so mad when he came back with those covenants that he broke them, that God said, don't worry, I'll get you another one, the Ten Commandments. And those were commandments. And now people could choose between death and life. And many people never understood that a commandment, a covenant, is a covenant between friends, two groups of people that voluntarily did something. And now a commandment is an emperor that will determine what you do, otherwise he will kill you. And that is what we ended up with. And so a couple of thousand years later, Yeshua HaMashiach, he cried out on the cross, Father, it is finished. And God was pleased because finally restorative justice was complete. Now mankind could choose again, could walk the way to back to the Father. Because what the interruption with Satan was that the people were removed out of the presence of God. And God loved us so much. Therefore, we had a way back. And coming back to the Father was a beautiful thing because Yeshua had his disciples. And why do I say Yeshua? Because his full name was Yeshua HaMashiach. But what happened? He trained 12 disciples. They walked like Yeshua. They talked like Yeshua. They thought like Yeshua. And they learned to pray the prayer of the righteous, of the children of light. And because they learned how to walk as the children of light, they trained people to become the children of light. But in 325, after many years of murdering out the Jewish people, because most of the Jewish people, they were loyal to the word of God. They knew that God was law. And because God is law, they also knew you don't fool around with that because the moment you don't follow the law, you will die. But the people called Goyim, people that were not Jewish like myself, we were eventually in charge. The people that were non-believers, that were heathens, that had accepted the way, the truth and the life, were watered down more and more and more. And they didn't understand the concept that the Jewish people had when they were raised as a kid. They knew you do not go against God because there is only one God. And therefore, when Yeshua had trained his disciples in 325, the Emperor of Rome did what Mr. Trump in the White House is doing now, playing God Almighty. And he said, this is what is going to happen. Otherwise, you will die in the arena. And he instituted the Roman Catholic Church. And with that, he made sure that the Sun God was abided by. They were praying on Sunday for the Sun God. And he made sure that the pagans could pray to the trinities. And therefore, he called them Christians. Because Christianity was already 134 years before. Actually, 325 years before Yeshua was born. How in the world can you get Christians claiming to be Christians, thinking that they're serving God while they're serving Satan? Because the followers that called themselves Christians, were based on Serapis. Serapis was a god of the underworld. And those were the Christians following a terrible situation. I wonder how in the world is that possible? I was raised a Christian. I believed that everything I did was done based on the word of God. And then when I was in court, I find out when you pray with the people you invest with, you don't sue them. I got judged on the fact that I did not sue those people and therefore the full responsibility was with me. Amazing grace. Then I would find out that praying is nothing wrong with, but the people that were lying on the oath 
And so I discovered that I had to learn the key to knowledge. What was the key to knowledge? It's not just believing the Bible that it is God's word, but I had to understand that the scriptures are the key to the knowledge. Wow, what does that really mean? The key to knowledge means that when we go a different route, when we use a different key, we are wrong. It's that simple. And you can say, well, how can you say that? Well, folks, after 12 years in front of judges, over 400 hours in high court, I tell you that I do know a little bit about law. I had to learn the hard way. I'm 70 years plus now. I was born in 1950, in June. And now that I taped this, it is December 2020. I had to learn that the law has a, a very specific purpose. And if the word of God is applied correctly, and it's turned within the disciples' minds, and being, in other words, it has to go through you. You have to understand it. Your mind, you got to think and ponder on it. When you prepare a defense, there is something to it that is not that easy, folks. And it enables the seeker to enter through the inner narrow gate. Wow. The law? God is the law. And when God speaks, when he created Adam and Eve, he decided, he created a person, a mankind, that would be able to live forever. But there were a couple of conditions. So many people read the Bible, and they swear by the Bible, they fight for the Bible, they kill for the Bible, and they don't understand. I don't need to kill for the Bible. I don't need to kill and disagree with people because I don't like you. The fact is, when I use the word of God as a key, the key, the key to the kingdom, that is the difference between a spiritual church and a carnal church. A carnal church was created in 325 AD, Anno Domino, and the emperor instituted, he determined. And who is this emperor? The emperor of Rome. He prayed to various gods. He was the one in power, and therefore he dictated which belief you had to follow. And if you didn't follow that, you had a major problem, because you had a choice. You could either go in the arena and fight the animals, meaning the lions and the wild animals, or you could be crucified upside down. Well, or you had another choice. Just say Jesus. And if you speak some kind of weird language on top of it, you know, it makes it sound a little bit more sincere. That is okay, as long as you say, I believe in Jesus. And there it is, a man-made belief, which acts as an obstacle. Because the goal, the objective, is to serve the Lord with all my heart. So how do I do that? What is that corrupted thinking? What is the protocol that holds us back? And that is why the question, is there a difference between a spiritual church and a carnal church? Does one see the hands of God at work in ways not recognized by the people of simple faith? See, the key to knowledge is so beautiful. The first group of people that got the law were the Jewish people. And initially it was a covenant for them and God. And that covenant was for the children of light. I shared it because I got excited when I learned that the aspect of the law is not that you don't do the things. They are the beginning days, the basics. If you cannot do the basics, how do you expect to be in heaven with God? Because the Ten Commandments, each time you violate the Ten Commandments as people of a carnal church, which most of us have lived in, or are living in, or are proving to live in. Because if I come back to President Trump and his dilemma that he is no longer elected, there is another president elect coming in power in January the 21st of 2021, we've got a little problem. Because it seems that 
the carnal church, yes folks, I call you a carnal church. And I don't say it with a smile on my face, I hate it. Because I used to live there for seven, six decades actually, before it finally started to dawn on me. What is it with us fighting, killing each other, because we believe different, while the keys to the kingdom are in the law? You see, the Jewish people had the keys to the kingdom. And when Yeshua was here on earth, he said to them, you belong to the synagogue of Satan because you're even holding other people back and today as we call ourselves Christians we have I think it's about three and a half billion people almost two and a half to three and a half billion people somewhere somehow call themselves Christians are connected with Christianity or live their life based on Christian principles that sounds great except it's totally carnal. It's not what God wanted us to do. God wanted us to follow the way, the truth, and the light. Now you say, what's the big deal? I'm a Christian. I'm going to church. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. No, folks. The key to the spiritual church, the spiritual life, is the key to the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God leads through a small path. Not just going to a powerful, mighty, mega church and singing and dancing and praising the Lord. It feels great. means nothing. And you say, how can you say that? You really hurt my feelings. Folks, maybe that's what I need to do. Hurt your feelings. In court, what I needed to learn was, it is nice to know the basics, but if you don't understand the true meaning of the law, you still have a problem. You have the right intent, you do the right things based on what you think are right, and you are still in violation of the law. How is that possible? The Living Scriptures is a Christian doctrinal gagmire. Gagmire is basically a place where you sink into more mud and go deeper and deeper and deeper. See, when you learn to understand the key to knowledge, the word is applied correctly and turned within the disciple's mind and being. It enables the seeker to enter through the inner narrow gate and learn from the living beyond man's misinterpretations and ability to corrupt. And what am I talking about? See, when you follow the way, the truth and the light, now you become children of the light. God personally will be there, guiding you, coaching you, leading you back to the Father's house. And you can call yourself a Christian and say, oh, praise the Lord. Well, somebody else did that too. It was King Saul. King Saul knew the law. He was the king. He was the first king of the Jewish people. He knew what would happen if somebody that was not the priest would sacrifice the animal. Yet he did it anyway. And he lost his life and his kingdom. And he lost the life of his children, Jonathan and his brother. It was terrible. But God said, i rather have you follow the law than come up with stuff that sounds great, that looks great. And that is exactly what I discovered in my life. As a Christian, and hopefully it's different for you, I had to learn first what the word Christian means. Remember in court, I went back to the basics. What is the evidence? I always was led to believe the following, and I explained that all to the judge. But what was the evidence? The evidence is that a Christian was developed in 325 BC. It was in the time of Alexander the Great. When he was dying, they were praying to the god of the underworld, Serapis. And those that followed Serapis were called Christians and the people that were in charge were called bishop 
of Christians. Whoa. So when Jesua was born and he had fulfilled the law and he was crucified and risen again, what happened? God said, now this is the way, the truth and the light. So by appointing the route, the spiritual way God wants us to be, in 325, we had all messed it up. Folks, it doesn't matter that you didn't know, but in your foundation were a lot of cracks. That is why we have the fanaticism. When we watch what is happening in the United States, a tremendous amount of people that are calling themselves Christians, voting for a man, President Trump, they didn't re-elect him, but they still going bananas after a man that knows all he knows is more money, money, money. So far, he put in seven and a half trillion dollars in his two ma in his four years in office, plus the extra eight nine hundred billion that he just said he won't accept that. It needs to be at least two thousand per person. That puts it back on another trillion and a half, two trillion. So instead of seven and a half trillion, he will go to nine and a half trillion, more deeper into that effort because somebody is paying that. And you folks are all, wow, look at Trump. The guy lives a life unbeknownst to a Christian. Even in the Christian principles, it says where a leader is supposed to be someone that's married to one wife, not a wine bearer, someone that controls himself, etc., etc., etc. And yet, that is in the carnal church. What about the spiritual church? We got to follow the way, the truth, and the light. And that is where majority of Christians have a problem. We find out that the leaders, they belong to the club. The richest pastors in the church, one is worth a billion dollars, another is worth a couple of hundred million dollars, another one is worth... Is that what Abba, Father, wants? When I fail, and I failed as a prodigal son, I learned to say, repentance, forgive me. Please, I want to go back to the Father's house. Father, forgive me. Let me work in the field. And the father says, I will prepare the fatted calf. He wants to have a party because his prodigal son or his prodigal daughter is back home. We now need to be trained proper. And that is why Jesua said, you follow the way, the truth and the light, the way I have prepared for you. See, there was somebody that listened very well to his grandfather. Adam had failed, and he talked with his children. And his seventh grandson, Enoch, learned from Adam a tremendous amount. Because Adam, in the time that he was with God, in the presence of God, he had learned and picked up so much that he shared that with his children. And Enoch was the seventh grandson of Adam seventh generation grandson. So therefore, Enoch applied what he learned from his grandfather, great, great, great grandfather. And God was pleased. And when Enoch was 365 years of age, he was the father of a son called Methuselah. Some of you know, might know the name because he almost turned a thousand years. And when Enoch was one walking with God, at the age of 365, God said, come with me. And that is what God is looking for. He invites us to be with him. And that is what we're aiming for, folks. I'm not looking down on Mr. Trump. Mr. Trump is doing whatever he wants to do. But it is the Lord that called unto Moses out of the mountain. He said, come unto me, for I would give thee the law for thy people, which shall be a covenant for the children of light. Folks, do you want to be a child of the light? God wants you back. That is what this whole foundation that I was working on and that I mentioned to be 
to you before I am working on the proper foundation. When I discovered being in court for so long and then sitting in a maximum security, pondering what in the world went wrong. Yes, of course, I miss my farm. Yes, of course, I miss all the freedom, the flying and all that. But that was not the issue. I was trying to figure out where did I go wrong? I did it based on what the Bible says. I did it based on what I was taught. I did it based on what I believed was the right way because this is how my pastors, my people that I believed in. But did I understand that the Bible is just a written word? It's a dead word that will be the key to the kingdom of God. You see, I don't have to fight with you because this says this. When people came to Jesus or Yeshua, they learned that Yeshua was there to fulfill the law of God. And when I am here, I am fulfilling the law of God by following the way, the truth, and the light. And I can say, look, Father, I made something nice for you. I changed your name. I changed the design of what you... You cannot argue with the law. The law is God. And God is life. And when I'm in the presence of God, I got to be at least able to keep the Ten Commandments. And since nobody has been able to do that, we all fail. So why don't we repent and go to the way, the truth and the light, and God himself will teach us. Because he said, you don't need anybody to teach you. I will teach you. See, that is what I had to learn the hard way. And see, this is something that most people don't understand. When you go through hard times, now you will be tested on everything you believe. When you face a pandemic, yes, you can overcome that. But folks, it is not easy. When you, chase, you face death or divorce or anything under the moon, God says, I'll be there. Humanity fails, but in the frustration, we might find the right way. Because if everything has failed, if you go to church and you try and you try and you try, why don't you just do what I do? I study the law. Where do we come from? What is so special about 325? Nicaea, what is that? What is the emperor? Rome Constantine doing why was it so important that we all followed the Roman Catholic faith and when Martin Luther in 1517 had written down in 95 theses why he could no longer do what the Roman Catholic Church said he got kicked out he got excommunicated and so the Reformation started but we find out that the Reformation caused more problems because we were still working on the same base as the Roman Catholic Church was, and that was on a pagan Christianity. Yes, folks, I hate to say it, but we are pagans. People that are praying to false gods. When we pray to Jesua Hamasia, he is a brother. He is not a god. Oops, does that mean that little Jesus, folks, what we're celebrating right now is the Stolzes. We are not celebrating Jesus' birthday because we don't even know when he was born. Some claim in Israel it's usually around uh, April, May, or February, March, April, March, April, somewhere around that time, snow is still on the ground. Yes, he was born, but he was raised a man of God. And we know that now because he belonged to a tribe called the Essenes. And we have found the word of God deep down in a chronovisor. I talked about it. The chronovisor is almost like a time machine. It's 53 miles of shelves, bookshelves, manuscripts, documents, Aramaic, written in the language that God spoke with Moses. Oops, Jesua. 
There are people that wrote about Jesua when he was alive. Josephus Flavius, Plinus, and others. And they discovered those books, those manuscripts in the Chronovite, sorry, special place or vault, basically. Something that was so special that nobody was allowed, yet some people that had special knowledge of a language, Aramaic, they took the time to develop and translate it into English. I got a hold of those books and they shared very cautiously what the truth is, what Yeshua talks about. Folks, we are so far away that when we face a judge pertaining to our beliefs, we might be surprised like I found out. I could not do what I wanted to do because the word of God says different. Uh-oh. So if your intent is right, you can still be guilty. You are responsible for your own actions. And you cannot blame it on your pastor. Your pastor will be dealt with, but you cannot blame the pastor because it is me and my house. We shall serve the Lord. And as we understand what God means, the Bible is a key to knowledge. Do you understand what I'm saying, sharing with you? The key to knowledge, because God will feed you. God will give you wisdom. God will give you direction. And as you learn to walk with God, that is how you overcome. Is Trump the ticket to the rapture? <laughs> Folks, Trump is a special dude. He's suffering of something like a narcissist. I stay nice because it is not my business. But a nurse is somebody that loves himself so much, he loves himself more than God loves him. So is Trump the greatest conspiracy besides the Constantine I in 325 AD? Folks, I want you to figure out December 21st, the day of the winter stalls. When you look up at the sky, you might see a Christmas star in Jupiter and Saturn appearing as one planet. And by stepping back, we can see the bigger picture. Something important is at stake. And maybe you realize that we are talking about the dawn of a new age. Events are taking place in the West with this whole pandemic, the COVID-19, disputed U.S. presidential election. It is more like a collapse of a regime that ruled for an exceptionally long time. Some may even say thousands of years. Today is an existential crisis for monotheism. And I tell you folks, how is this crisis affecting you or Christianity in particular? As Emperor Constantine gobbled together Christianity as practiced in the West to force all the old world religions into one, that is what he did. It is an example of what happened. Now in the new age they are setting a reset. We're talking about the new world order. And when we recognize that December is used actually three days, the sun disappears to develop in the same place. And on December the 25th, the sun visibly sets further south again. It marks the first day of the new solar year. This is also where a god who dies for three days and is reborn comes. The Romans substituted Jesus Christ for the sun god. The fact is nobody knows the real birth of Jesus. And remember the word religion, it's religar or rebind into fasci, hence fascism. As its root, at its roots, Christianity was an ideology created by the Romans to bind the world's people into a single centralized state or a fascist new world order. And that is what is happening right now. Trump might be the last president. Legit, I'm not debating that at the moment. That is up to you. 
but with the situation around Trump where the majority of people are totally going ballistic, you ought to ask yourself, what am I doing? I'm a Christian. Is Christianity indeed the way, the truth and the light? Ask God. Seek you first the kingdom of God, and all those other things shall be added unto you. See, the Bible is the key to knowledge. So use that key. Seek you first, and above else, repent. Because when I finally came to understand that being a Christian, speaking in tongues, being baptized several times and excommunicated three times, was not enough. What was important was that I came to understand the Lord, that God says, I am the law. And as the law says, this is what I want you to do, the way, the truth, and the light, then that is what you ought to do. And if you call it, oh, but I call it this because I'm so special, I'm doing, that means nothing for God. Because if you don't do what God asks you to do, you're still sinning. You're missing the boat, folks. And during this holiday season, think about it. God bless you. And remember, tough times never last. Tough people, they do.
Thank you.